Welcome to God of Rome. This is Will Sanchez. I have two very special guests today. Their names are Miles Bernstein. He is a youth running ambassador for the New York Runners Club. And Derek Atkins, a gold medalist in the 400 meters hurdles from the 1996 Atlanta, Georgia Summer Olympics. I'm thrilled to have both of these young people on the Gotta Run TV show. Welcome, guys. Hi. Thank you. So, Miles, let's start the show with you. Miles is a great name, especially for a runner. Thank you. Tell us, where were you born, and is there a story on how you got your name, Miles? Um, I was born at, um, in Brooklyn. My name comes from Miles Davis, my parents. Um, really liked him, and so they named me after him. Miles Davis, do you know yeah. what, uh, what he did? Yeah, he was a jazz player. That's right. I don't know if he yeah. ran, but uh, I don't know. what school do you go and Do you have any uh, favorite subjects there? Uh, I go to MS447 in Brooklyn, and I think my favorite subject is math and social studies. Well, what is yeah. about math that excited you like? I just like about math the fact that um, some of it's complicated and some of it's easy and there's kind of like a balance to it and it's it gets your brain working a lot yeah the reason i pick on math that was my favorite subject cool now yeah. who's the fastest in your family by the way i think the fastest in my family is probably either my dad or my brother i don't know I, i'm not that fast uh -huh. I, I just yeah I'm not that fast of a runner, but I still like to run a lot. Okay, cool. You can have some, uh, somebody to look up to, your dad. Yeah. Excellent. Is your brother younger? or? He's younger. He's young. Also, he's, he has somebody to look up to. Yeah. Okay, great. You're right in the middle. Yeah. Miles, mm -hmm. how did you get into running? Um, I got into running by um, my friend at my old school, PS321. He's been running with my current coach, Nicoletta for a long time before she started working with the Roadrunners. And he joined Mighty Milers, so I wanted to try it, and I tried it, and I really liked it. And then when they brought, I mean, then when I got into fourth grade and I was eligible to do Young Runners, I joined Young Runners, and I ran with them until sixth grade, where my new school only gets Mighty Milers and not Young Runners. Mm -hmm. So and now I'm now on the team with uh, my same coach, Nicoletta, and she has her own running club. Yeah. What's the name of that running club? Run for Fun. Run for Brooklyn. Fun. That's a great title. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Miles, tell us about a typical day from the moment you get up to what you uh, eat to to when you do your homework, mm -hmm. stuff like that. What do you do for fun? So so what do you get up in the morning? What do you do? Uh, so usually my alarm would go off at 6.15, but it wouldn't get out of bed until 6.40 <laughs> because I don't like to get up early at all. And then I would get up, and I would go downstairs, and I would eat breakfast, and it would probably be like cereal or something like that. Oh man! Now, do you waffles. make your own breakfast or sometimes, mom, sometimes, sometimes, depending on what it is. So, what's your favorite kind of breakfast? What kind of cereal? Uh, mini wheats. Mini wheats, yeah. Okay. With milk or? Yeah, with milk. Do you take juice? Uh, orange juice. Orange juice, okay. But not when I run because that makes me feel sick. Oh, okay. So you listen to your body. Yeah. That's one of the mantras of running, to listen to your body. Cool, so you're learning, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I go to school, and then when I get out of school, I would, we would have to go pick up my brother. And then if I had running practice, I would go to running practice. And, and what does running practice consist of? Uh, we walk to the park, and then we, we usually would, we'd like run uh, on the paths, or we'd run cross country across the, um, the grass. Ooh. And the park we being? Prospect Park. Prospect Park. That's a great park. Yeah. Excellent. So, would you say you've run, to, how, do you know what distance? Is it? Uh, uh, it's like mile, two mile, three oh, okay. mile. Okay, that's excellent. Yeah. Okay, now you're back home. Do you have homework to do? Yes. Do you do your homework? Yeah. What kind of homework do they give you? Uh, every day I have math. Every day I have reading, and I have social studies homework a lot, yeah. Okay, cool. Now, do you have any gadgets that you play with? 
You have any favorites, gadgets? Uh, my phone. Your phone? What yeah. kind of phone? iPhone. iPhone? Yeah. How old are you? I'm 11. <laughs> 11. I don't even have an iPhone. <laughs> There, you'd be surprised there are a lot of kids my age uh, with, with iPhones. IPhone. Now, what do you do with the iPhone? I play games on it. I go on Instagram. I Instagram? Do, yeah, stuff like that. <laughs> 11 years old. You're the digital age. Now, is there text messaging on that? Are you yeah. able to talk to your friends? Yeah, I text my friends. Okay. All right. Now, at what time do you go to bed? Uh, I go into bed like maybe like 8.30 and then but I fall asleep at like 9.30 or something. So, so what's going on at one hour? I don't know. I like, <laughs> I, uh, I read, uh, I like relax and then I go to sleep. You can read. Uh, 11, I was reading Superman. I don't know <laughs> which 11 you will read today. Yeah, uh, I read a lot of uh, non-fiction, fiction. But what's, do you have a favorite, favorite book at this favorite point? Favorite book? Uh, I have a favorite series. What's your favorite series? Uh, the Divergent series I really like, and The Hunger Games. Oh, wow. Really like, yeah. So you must be excited. The Hunger Games, yeah, the next uh, movie. movie's coming out. Yeah. Have you seen the, uh, the movies yet? Yeah, I've seen all the other oh, ones. Cool. Right now you are a youth running ambassador for the Roadrunners. How did that happen? Well, Nicoletta, she recommended me to the Roadrunners, and then they looked at everything. They looked at my um, my grades, how many r races I've done, and then they selected me. And I went through the training with about like t 15 other kids, and we learned how to do public speaking and how to yeah do public spe speaking and stuff stuff like that, and how to um mingle and like get to know people. And then yeah, that's pretty much it. And then we started doing. Well, uh, we do like we do activities like like this. Oh, like this. And uh, the marathon, we get to go to the starting line. And this is really exciting because it's like a once in a lifetime opportunity. So I think this is great how the NBA and New York Roadrunners had like combined to do such a great thing. For me to be able to run the second leg. Taking the baton from Commissioner Adam Silver. I run through the streets of Bay Ridge where I went to high school. Pretty special for me. You know, the NBA Fit program, I think, is so important to promote fitness amongst our youth. NBA players, WNBA, even broadcasters running this race in a relay. A big message for the youth of the five boroughs. Are you smiling? Oh, that's not a smile. I need a, you gotta be excited. You gotta have a big smile. You're gonna have this picture the rest of your life. It's pretty cool. To team up with the road winners, I thought this was a pretty unique idea for us to go out and be a part of a marathon. Uh, right. We have a lot of really cool people who are actively involved in this, and uh, I, I just thought it was a really cool idea that it really honored to be a part of. Sounds like there's a lot of fun, but there yeah. must be a serious side to this. For example, do you go and, and do other talk to other kids about? Uh, about the programs that Roadrunners offers? What are some of the, you mentioned some names. So what is, uh, for example, Mighty Milers? Yeah. What is that? Mighty Milers is a youth program at uh, school, uh, a lot of schools, in public schools in New York City. And it's basically where the kids, they run around the track or whatever, and they track their miles, and at each certain level of miles, like I think I remember at 75 miles, you get a medal for. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. 75 <laughs> miles? No, no, not 75. At 26.2 miles, you get your first marathon medal, the meaning that you've run a marathon. And then you do, you then at the next one, it's, it's like 50, some, 52. 52. You get another wow. medal. Then at 70 something, you get another medal. And then at 100. Point three, you get the biggest medal, and the that's medal. and then you also get like prizes along the way, like pens and T-shirts and Very stuff cool. like that. Oh, but you've got time to do this. You don't have to do the twenty-six point two no, 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 no. in two hours it's, and thirty you, minutes. You do it like over a month or okay. over, yeah. But this is an after-school program. No, it's like either during recess or it could be after school. Okay, recess. Yeah, I remember recess. <laughs> that was not doing lunch breaks, right? Yeah. Oh, cool. Now. Did you meet Derek at one of those uh, one of those uh, meetings? Yeah, for young runners, uh, I remember 
we had our young runners team and they told us that the entire team was just gonna we were gonna go outside and we were gonna run and um Derek came to the school and he talked to us and he ran with us and then he went inside and he like talked to a group of kids oh, like I think it was like a grade or something and then he talked to us about running about his story and yeah he has a good story right yeah well let's let's turn our attention to Derek welcome Derek hi thank you Listen, mm -hmm. let's start the same thing. Tell us a little bit about your childhood. Where were you born and uh, how did you get into running? Like Miles, I was born in Brooklyn, but I only lived in Brooklyn for a day or two. A day or two? <laughs> <laughs> My parents lived on Long Island, but I was born in Brooklyn Jewish Hospital um, in 1970. And I grew up on Long Island, just a few miles outside of Queens. And I began running much in the same way that Miles began running. Um, I, I ran for fun. That was not the name of my club, Run for Fun, but that's what we did. We, we ran for fun. And like Miles says, uh, that he's not the fastest. I really wasn't considered to be super fast when I was Miles' age, but I ran because I liked doing it. But then uh, when I got into high school, especially the 11th and 12th grade year of high school, I underwent a growth spurt to where I grew to the height that I am now, which is I'm 6'3". And through, while I was training through that growth spurt, I began to really excel in speed and endurance. Um, I received a scholarship to Georgia Tech, went to Georgia Tech. In your senior <coughs> year, mm -hmm. you grew from five foot nothing to six foot three. I, well, <laughs> freshman year in high school, I was five foot four. My senior year, I was six foot three. Excellent. And, and so that, over the course of those four years, and, I grew a lot. that spurred it your, your... And I was training through it all. And I think that had a lot to do with my, um, kind of like my boost in performance. Because prior to then, prior to my 11th and 12th grade year in high school, I was another person on the track team. I wasn't considered the best. I wasn't at the front of the pack. I wasn't at the back of the pack. I was somewhere in the middle. And um, but by my senior year, I began winning a lot of races on Long Island and in New York City, and I was. But recruited. why the hurdles? I mean, that's a complicated uh, sport. My father was a physical education teacher and and one of my track coaches, and when um, I was 13, um, my father said I'd have a better chance at winning races if I tried the hurdles, if I tried another type of event, because all of the kids my age wanted to run the 100 meter dash or the 50 meter dash or the 200 meter dash. Sexy one. Right, exactly. He says if you try the hurdles and you run the hurdles with good technique, you have a better chance to win races. So I began hurdling when I was in the seventh grade. So, um, you know, by the time I was in the 12th grade, I was really good at it. You were winning championship when you were coming in. Yes, college. yes. Now, everybody mm -hmm. knows today Edward Moses because mm -hmm. you all saw him on TV. He's the, yes. the number one hurdle of all time. Was he one of your heroes? Definitely. I saw him win a gold medal at the 1984 games in Los Angeles. Uh -huh. And that's when I became an Edwin Moses fan. Uh -huh. um, he had a long streak. I mean, he won more than 100 races. In a row, yes. He, yes. 22, something like that. His streak lasted almost 10 years. Well, I and, remember the numbers, nine yes. years, nine months, nine days. And that, yes, exactly, exactly. Edwin retired from international track in 1988. And I didn't hit the international track scene until 1991. So. Okay. Fortunately, I missed his heyday. <laughs> okay. I did try out for the Olympics in 1992. I was still in college, um, and I was uh, I was 22 years old, and I uh, I did not make it. You know, I I placed fourth at the Olympic trials, and to make the Olympic team, you have to take first, second, or third. You know, and well, and very I, bad, but not good enough for the Olympics. Right. Well, how did that make you fail at the time? To, to be, give up? No, I, I didn't give up at all. Um, I actually was not that disappointed because when I was Miles age and even in high school and even my first few years in college, I didn't think that I could go to the Olympics. Even as I was on track scholarship at Georgia Tech, I didn't think I could go to the Olympics. But my coach recommended that I go to the Olympic trials. I tried out and the fact that I came so close was kind of inspiring to me. I said to myself, if I could come this close in 1992, if I train for four more years, I can get faster and stronger perhaps 
and uh, make the Olympic team in 1996. So I graduated from college in 1993. I think you got a master's, no, a bachelor's a in A bachelor's in mechanical engineering, That's yes. a tough uh, It's a five-year program, yes. Mm -hmm. Have you still mm -hmm. able to study and run those, those four years? It was tough to um, study and run, and to be honest, I had some advisors that said that maybe I shouldn't study engineering in college because um, I had to run at the Division I collegiate level. Yeah. But like Miles and like yourself, I loved math <laughs> and science. And engineering is a great uh, major for those who love math and science. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I wanted to study. And so it was tough. So we stretched my curriculum out to, four, uh, to five years. And the Olympic trials were in Atlanta. Uh, and I stayed there as I trained for the Olympics. So I, I, I tell people all the time, I didn't really go to the Olympics. The Olympics came to me, <laughs> you know. Athletes came from all over the world. Yeah, the home and field Georgia advantage. Tech was the Olympic Village. Oh, oh, so the right. dorms where I stayed um, as a student yeah. from 88 to 93 were the dorms where athletes were housed. So you, you think it all that made a big me. difference ecologically <laughs> for you being the home field, home cooking and all that? Yes, I do believe that the home field advantage um, is something that's very real and psychological um, and, and, uh, psychologically and uh, but at the same time it makes you makes you more nervous, makes you more anxious but um, in track and field uh, the anxiety, the nerves, which causes norepinephrine to build up in your system actually causes you to run faster. So if you could deal with the butterflies in your stomach, just focus and you'll run fast. Atkins has the lead, but Tay Tay badly for the finish. It's going to be Derek Atkins for the gold. You're on top of the world when you win the gold. Mm -hmm. And in fact, you have it around your chest. That's the actual medal. Yes, this is the medal I won in 96. Yes. Excellent. So after that, I think if I remember reading your bio, you were planning on being a medical doctor, but you gave it up to be a, to, to be a professional funder. How do you make <laughs> such a this tough decision like that? Because you know it, the family wants a doctor. After the Olympics, you know, I ended up running professional or international track and field until I was 32 years old. At that age, I actually opened up a, um, an MCAT study manual. And I had graduated from college 10 years prior. <laughs> and it all looked foreign to me. <laughs> and I, I, I said, I don't think I could do this now. <laughs> so I ended up not going to medical school. But I have a great job now. I'm very happy with the New York Roadrunners promoting the youth programs that Miles was a part of. And um, it has meant so much to me being a part of a good youth program in track and field when I was young. And now that the Roadrunners are supporting you through the sport of running, um, great youth like Miles, uh, I'm, I'm very happy where I am. So, so you go mm -hmm. around to schools, uh, mm -hmm. giving talks. In fact, I think you have a uh, Olympic mentality that, that you share with the runners. We at the New York Roadrunners call the, the Olympic mentality um, the mentality of a winner. And when we say the word winner, we don't just mean being a winner in sports. I stress to students like Miles um, that it's more important to be, at his age, a winner in the classroom. You know, and then in every single thing that you do, whether it be running or another sport, whether it be music or any other extracurricular activity, uh, dance, art, doing your best in every single thing that you do. Um, is what will cause you to be a winner in life, to be successful in life. And that's the Olympic mentality, not just doing something, but really giving it your all. And when I say doing your best, I focus on the word your, doing your best. Mm -hmm. Not so much, I tell students not to compare themselves so much to others, um, but just doing the best that you can. Yeah. Whether others are in front of you, academically, athletically, or otherwise, or whether they're behind you. Mm -hmm. You just keep pushing yourself forward. And that's why Miles has such a great mentality, because he, he just came out and said, well, I'm not the fastest in, in my family, <laughs> but I love to run, <laughs> you know? And that's the, menta that's the Olympic mentality. I did my best, and one day I became the best and won an Olympic right. gold medal. So. That's a very rare, rare thing that happens, to become the best, the top of the world. Yes. And now you're giving back by, uh, by inspiring our young people. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for your service like that. Sure. Thank you, Road Runners, for having <laughs> the program. There's a lot but, of workers um, in the Youth and Community Services Division, Simon Durkin and a whole lot of others of us that 
go go into schools. We ha we're in more than 500 schools, and just in New York City, more than se between 700 and 1,000 nationwide. 321, where Miles went, is one of our favorites. Oh, yeah, and I think. Uh, you know, schools from around the world come and to study your program, to, so they could bring it back yes, we to do. their countries. Yes, we do have uh, Mighty Miles programs in other nations, and then we have um, there are uh, other running programs that do study what we're doing and create their own, which we have no problem with. That we want everyone to run and, and to enjoy the benefits. Absolutely. Yes. Well, boss, mm -hmm. let's get back to you. <laughs> let's see. I think recently you were honored. You and another friend were honored as the. Youth Running Ambassadors of the Year. Yeah. Wow, that's very exciting. Yeah. I mean, your, your parents must have been floating. Well, tell us about the day you got the honor. What was that like? Who did you meet? And, you know, tell us, how were you feeling? I was really nervous because it was at Jacob Javis by the Mar in the Marathon Expo and upstairs. And the thing that was, made me really nervous is, is the fact that it was the actual press conference that Bill de Blasio and the police commissioner came to talk about what the marathon's gonna be like. And behind me, there was just like cameras from like every single news channel in the city. Uh -huh. And it was just like, it was very nerve wracking. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, uh, I was, we were presented the award from, um, by, um, Bill de Blasio, um, Commissioner Braddon, and Mary Wittenberg. And it was really cool to meet them, and it just felt really, it, it just felt really cool that I got to cool. meet them. Now let me ask you a question, Miles. Who was the tallest person in that room? <sighs> um, I think the tallest person was Bill de Blasio. He was really tall. He Very looked, tall. Because on TV he looks, uh, he, he looks tall, but in real life, he's much taller. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. especially from your point of view. Yeah. All right, excellent. As an ambassador, you get to meet a lot of cool people. Yeah. And I'm sure each, each and every one of them were special to you, but sometimes yeah. you make a connection with somebody, with still that one person, whoa, you ran to mom and said, I had the most wonderful time hanging out with this guy, with this person. Is there anybody like that? I think that it would have to be either Bill de Blasio or uh, Tatiana McFadden, because she was really, her story was really inspiring and cool. The fact that she's won marathons and how, like, how she does it with the wheelchair, how amazing that is. I, I think, though, Bill de Blasio meeting him is really cool. Because you he's had to probably stretch your neck. Yeah, he's in there. <laughs> Oh, cool. Yeah. So the wheelchair champion was there. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. You got to meet her here. Yeah. You heard about this uh, Olympic mentality. Yeah. Doing the best you can in everything you do. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a real challenge. Yeah. Doing your best in everything you do. You know, sometimes it may have happened already. You know, you're not sure what to do. You know, darn. Or you may have stumbled a bit. Who do you think, who would you call if you needed help? I think that maybe my parents. Your parents? Or um, my babysitter, Sharon. Your babysitter? She's, she's, she's cool? Yeah, she, she'll, she's really um, helpful with stuff like that. Okay, so your parents are very, very supportive of you. Yeah. That's cool, so you, you'll be able to talk to them. Yeah. Listen, Miles, mm -hmm. 20 years from now, maybe more, this will be on the internet. Mm -hmm. Once on the internet, it's all forever on the internet. <laughs> yeah. You've been sitting with your girlfriend or your family, yeah. and you're watching, and you may not recognize yourself. Mm -hmm. So imagine that. You're 20 years older, mm -hmm. Derek's age. What is it that you want your future self not to forget? I, don't, I think that I don't want my future self to forget to keep running and to to keep like stay strong and just like endure through things and yeah. Okay. Yeah. Keep on running. Yeah. Run anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's let's go over to to Derek. 
Derek, what are some of your future challenges? My, 2015 and beyond. My future challenges, wow. I, um, right now, I just want to continue to do the best that I can for the New York Roadrunners. Um, as an Olympian, sometimes it's hard to find a uh, occupation that you enjoyed as much as your sport. And with, it took me a while, so with the Roadrunners job uh, that I have now, I truly enjoy it and I just want to do the best that I can with it. I don't have like very specifically defined goals like I used to. I used to have so much ambition on all these goals and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Ah, now I'm just kind of like enjoying life. Enjoying life. <laughs> enjoying what I do and uh, taking it day by day. Cool. You call it a job. I think it's more of a calling. You seem it, to have it, a gift. I, I think so. Guest. Just seeing you sit here with Mars <laughs> and the way you, you guys interact, I think you're a gifted educator. So it's, Thank you. Uh, it's more than a job. It's yes, just, yeah, it definitely cool. is. It definitely is. All mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Well, did we cover you know, some of your future challenges, uh, Miles? What do you think you're going to be doing in 2015? In 2015, so I yes well, around the corner. in seventh grade, seventh grade is the most important year in middle school for public schools because uh, yeah. why, that's why, the, is it, why is it the most important? Because it's the great, your grades in seventh grade are the ones that the high schools look at. So You're I'm already thinking be, ahead, huh? Well, that's, that's what I have to focus on is getting good grades so I can get to a good high school and then go to a good college. Yeah. Okay, excellent. I have a feeling, Miles, you're going to do that. Thank you. Listen, thank you so much, for both of you, for coming in. It's been a total pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Miles. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you. Good job, Miles. Thank you. <laughs>